hidden in a park, ready to protect the local residents from barbarian invasions, lies a 2,000-year-old Roman fort. What does it have to do with this dam 10 kilometers further on at sea? And what does Emperor Augustus have to do with the construction of this fortress? Follow us and learn more about the fascinating history of Fort Matillo. We are standing at the entrance to the fortress where the Roman governor Corbulo had a canal dug to the Rhine in the year 47 on the border with Germania Inferior. Today, the fort is hidden in a park just outside the Dutch city of Leiden. In 2009, the exact location of the fort was discovered during excavations, after which this earthen wall with trees was placed exactly where the remains of the fort walls lie underground. But what do we see here in this park? And what is the exact story behind this once grand Roman fort? To answer that question, we have to go back to the year 57 BC, during the Gallic War of none other than Julius Caesar. Between 58 BC and 51 BC, he led a series of campaigns against Gallic tribes in the northernmost part of the Roman Empire. The surrender of the Gallic king Vercingetrix in 51 BC is generally seen as Julius Caesar's final victory and with it, the Rhine became the natural northern border of the expanded Roman Empire. And although these unsuspecting residents crossed this nearby bridge without hesitation, the Romans knew better and preferred not to venture onto the barbarian side of the Rhine. Many people are familiar with Hadrian's Wall in England, but few know that over 100 years earlier, Emperor Augustus ordered its foundations to be built on the European mainland because the Germani continued to invade the river. In the year 9, Emperor Augustus ordered to start the construction of the first of what would become a total of 60 forts that guarded the 568 kilometer long Rhine border. This Limish Germanicus expanded steadily into the Limes, eventually stretching over 5,000 kilometers from Hadrian's Wall in the United Kingdom via the Black Sea to Africa. The Roman Empire had grown to become the largest empire ever in history. Fort Matillo is one of the northernmost Roman forts of which remains have been found on the European mainland. There was another fort built during the reign of Caligula further north called Lugdunum Batavorum, 10 kilometers further along the present-day Catwick but its remains were swallowed up by the sea. Recent research has shown that it is precisely here in the sand where sun worshippers now hang out that the fortress once stood. But where everything has disappeared here, the precise location of the walls of Fort Matillo is known and many excavations have revealed what it must have looked like. On the site where a residential area now lies, a canal to the Rhine was dug in the year 47 and a harbour was built here which formed the basis of a small village. During the revolt of the Batavi, in which the Batavian leader Julius Chivalis plotted to mislead the Romans, the watchtower and village here were taken and destroyed around 69 AD. After even large cities like Cologne were taken by the Batavians, the Romans struck back hard by sending their general Quintus Serialis, who restored Roman power and soon a much stronger Fort Matillo was rebuilt. This original fort was made of wood and clay around 70 AD. Between 110 and 125 AD, the fort was reinforced with tough walls, perhaps to accommodate the passing Emperor Hadrian in 122 AD who was on his way to the United Kingdom to order the construction of his famous wall there ten years later. The most important find from this exact spot dates from this time. It is a bronze horseman's mask 
that was decorative, but was also used in battles. Try to imagine how you would have stood here as a Batavian if dozens of Roman horsemen with such masks came galloping towards you. Probably between 196 and 205 AD, the fort was widened once more to 95 by 155 meters and reinforced with stone towers. The current wall of earth and trees is located exactly on that spot. Try to imagine that when you walk through the tunnel under the wall of the southwest side, around the year 200, you were walking here towards the inn of the adjacent camp village for a well-earned drink. Such a camp village was called a vicus. Here lived the wives and children of soldiers and were the shops and industry. Among the trees in the park, where we now recreate and where our children play, 2,000 years ago was one of the few relatively safe places in the area, at a time when barbarians, diseases and weather conditions were a constant threat. That is precisely why it is so important to continue to remind ourselves of Europe's history by preserving places like this among the architecture of modern times. With a final look across the Rhine towards the North Sea, there is only one thing left to say. Thanks for watching and see you again in one of our next videos. Thank you.